Speaking of imbalances, that's another imbalance I wanted to discuss with you, right? So we, we get about, I mean, give or take, we, we, we get about a million uh, international students in, in the U.S. every mm -hmm. year. About half of that comes from China and India alone. Mm -hmm. A third, more than a third, like 35% is from China. Mm -hmm. Then when you turn the page, you're absolutely right. The number of American students that go to China, China is not even the number one destination, um, is 11,000. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. Okay, you've, you've been a businessman. So you, you, know, you, you land in Shanghai, uh, you go to a boardroom to make a deal. And it turns out that the, the guys on the other side of the table, they speak English, uh, they know our culture, they watch our movies, they laugh at our jokes, they know all about us. In most cases, we, don't, we know very little about their culture. Shouldn't we be sending vastly larger number of American students to China to learn their culture and not, not, not to stay there and set up their companies? We want them back here in Atlanta, Midtown, by the way, <laughs> Tech Square. But, uh, but, but, but to, to learn about China, yeah. don't you think that would be a good idea? It is an enormous knowledge gap, enormous knowledge imbalance. I would, I would agree with that. Um, I would tell you that we work very hard at the State Department. We are nowhere near where we need to be to have enough Mandarin speakers so that we can understand, even at the most senior diplomatic levels in the United States, that we have the capability to watch and read what's coming out in the, uh, the Mandarin language press from China. Uh, so it is a, an enormous undertaking. Uh, you, know, you, you, you talked about this as an imbalance. One of the central theses of our policy with respect to China these past, past four years has in fact been about that, about reciprocity. So uh, imagine now you're a company here at Georgia Tech and you want to go build out a business in China. Because you want to sell to the 1.4 billion people there and you need to make an investment. The rules for you to invest there are radically different than some young person in China who'd like to come invest here in Atlanta. That's not right. We need fair and reciprocal rules when it comes to foreign direct investment. We need fair and reciprocal rules when it comes to press reporting. So one of the reasons we know so much less about the Chinese culture has less to do with the number of students and the fact that uh, a person who is a credentialed Western reporter inside of China can't move around freely. This is an enormous imbalance. We've tried to take that on. We had Chinese propaganda out outlets here in the United States that were running free and clear while valid U.S. media companies that wanted to report on what was taking place. By the way, at an incredibly important time when the Chinese Communist Party was permitting the export of a virus around the world and they couldn't get to the places that they needed to get to find the information that would have been very valuable for the United States to have had in a timely fashion. So there's enormous information imbalance attached to that. I, I talked about one reason there's only 11,000 American students traveling to China, it's that they don't want them there. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want Americans. Why? Because when Americans go to a college campus, you've seen it, I, I, I traveled the campus a bit this morning. <laughs> students jogging, running, talking, having fun, inquiring doing the things that we do in, the, in, the, in a place, a democracy, a republic like our country. This is not the Chinese campus. Uh, and so there is an imbalance there. And we have to work to convince and impose cost on the Chinese Communist Party until such time as there is reciprocity in every space. The president talked about it in trade. We've talked about it in terms of freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. I, I could go through the list of places where we have for decades permitted the Chinese Communist Party to have an exception to every international rule. So what's a good, another example? The World Trade Organization, an important institution to make lives better for jobs for people right here in the state of Georgia. Nearly every country participates in a single way. The Chinese Communist Party says, no, we're special. We should be a developing country with a set of trade preferences that benefit China enormously. And what the Americans just for decades, this isn't partisan, both political parties just said, you know, we're going to let that, we're going to let that pass. It can't be. It can't be any longer. And this is what President Trump has said. We're, we're, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to demand that China comply with the same set of rules that every other nation is asked to comply with. And when we do, America will be safer and more secure. America will be more prosperous. Our allies and partners in Southeast Asia and in 
uh, South Korea and Australia and in Europe, they'll be safer and more prosperous. And we will build out a coalition that simply demands that sovereign nations compete on a fair and level playing field. Should happen in academia, should happen in the commercial space. If we get that right, America will be just fine.